The following presentation does not represent Australian opinion or intellect. We do not speak for any religious order or ethnic minority. We are not political scientists or uni graduates. We are insignificant upper lower class skull, comparing notes and airing grievances. It's just our opinion. Deal with it. The GST will ever be part of our policy. Never, ever. Never, ever. It's dead. So don't have to go back to where they're part of It is a big idea. No, we don't need them. A new world order. Uh, by, by 1990, no Australian child will be living in poverty. You would welcome Scott and Bones to see this as well. You should show us. The social group can talk about that. That's what they say. The Princess Anne was a king, man. Dude, what a what a fighter, man. Pity what he he let himself go though. That's fucked. He looks like he's fifty-two, sixty-two. He looks when, fucked. When did he stop fighting that? Uh, two thousand and two. Two. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's what it said. Man, I remember when his career took off, and we were in um, we were in high school, like we were in year seven, because I'm pretty sure that's when um. The game came out that was about it, like, you know, his, his licensed game. I'm pretty sure we were in year seven. So that means he, his whole career had wound, it, wound up by the time we finished high school. Oh, sorry, uh, 2002, 2003. So, yeah, yeah. 2003. So his career started when we started high school and yeah. it wound up by the time we finished. Who are we talking about? Sorry. Prince Nazim. Oh, Prince Nazim. The guy you just saw the video it's of. from yeah. Ye Yemen. He's all right. Yeah, Yemen. He's all right. <laughs> all right. Nothing yeah, special. He, he's, nah, he's... He, are you... <laughs> he's alright. Like he's yeah. not. Nah. How many how many video games you got licensed after you? <laughs> you know what he, they said though. They're saying here that um, <laughs> he didn't. It's all right. He didn't fulfill his potential. Nah, because he got a. He I remember he got injured or something, and then he lost a fight, and then just took too long to get back into it. Like it really spooked him when he lost his first fight. Spooked like a horse. Like a horse. No, no, no. Like like Rousey, man. You know, she didn't, she didn't fight for a whole year because yeah. she lost, and then she just got, got knocked out and knocked out in eight seconds. What whatever happened? it was. No, no, sorry, I'm just adjusting my uh, muffler, <coughs> my, my muffling device. It's called, it's, called, it's called a pop screen. <laughs> the pop screen. I'm adjusting the pop screen. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot, dude. I remember like I, I held out on buying one for like the home studio for years because a muffler. <laughs> Talking about a muffler? <laughs> I'm in an antagonising mood today, FYI. Oh. I'm going to be just poking the nest. And I've there. just been watching the Zim, like, not cunts out for <laughs> the last ten rounds. Uh, That's your question. Wait, how are you wearing jeans? I know, man. You're the guy that would look for any opportunity to come in your jocks. I'm literally in my jocks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, when we pulled up, I walked out to the uh, I'm taking to my his van. Off. This guy's, like, taking his clothes off. <laughs> I'm literally, like, in shorts. These are kind of like jeggings, so... Jeggings. And I've got them pulled up, so that's all right. Do me a favour. Please don't ever say that again. I know, man. <laughs> I've got my three-quarter jeggings on. They're quite cool. It's all right. Like, to be fair, I do have those 80s acid wash jeans that are like jeggings. But it's 50 degrees oh, today. I've seen those on you before. Where? I think you wore them for the football ones. No. Yeah. No chance. I wouldn't have worn them to the football. I bought them as a dare. With, it, it, with, it, it, he wore them to the football with some brightly coloured sneakers, orange. You I've know got, what? I've got he, a, he wore them at retro round. Dude, I've got a photographic memory. I remember that shit. That sounds like something I would do, but I don't remember wearing the footy. It was something you did. Retro round. Because, uh, dude, I bought them as a dare. Me and him were at the crack then. And retro, I just, retro round? I was telling him about... Um, 80s throwback round. Do you ever buy clothes off um, ASOS at all? Uh, no, I don't know. ASOS. Know. It's actually a really good site, man. I've been using Actually, it. that's another thing, because I've been buying stuff off eBay. Yeah. But ASOS... No, ASOS is good for clothes, Yeah, man. yeah. They've got this, a lot of good sizing. Is this our first sponsor, ASOS? <laughs> nah. Dude, first sponsor would have been Maximus. Yeah. Maximus? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Maximus, and then... Well, I haven't seen a dollar yet, but... <laughs> and then VB. <laughs> yeah, the first ten episodes, VB, man. <laughs> VB and Maximus. <laughs> no, dude, ASOS is, a, is an online um, thing. It's just... A, it's clothes, is accessories. Is that something? ASOS? I actually don't have no idea what it means. No idea. Um, on it's the from the UK, I think, originally. But ASOS Australia? Yeah, but there's... Yeah, I was going to say, but they've got Australian... Um, uh, uh, okay, yeah. Distributors or whatever. Yeah. So you order something on a Monday, you could get it by Wednesday, theoretically. They've got some cool shit. They buy jeans, jackets, t-shirts, yeah, yeah. whatever and, you want. But the, their good thing is, like, um, their sales, when they do sales, you can buy... I bought a pair of chinos, like, fitted pair of chinos for, like, $14. Like, literally. And I wore them... Those chinos were, like, nice enough to wear to engagements and... Well, 70% off. That's what I'm saying. Let's do it. You can get, like, singlets and stuff, jocks, like, really, really cheap. This pants would be up your alley. There's army print kind of jeggings. 
<laughs> 19 bucks. Stop trolling me, Trollman. Yeah, it no, delivery, delivery, delivery leaning like, over, leaning over all creepy. Delivery is like. like a flat fee, like five bucks. But then if you go over forty dollars or something, it's free. It's all right. Yeah, so you, if you can load up during sales and stuff, you can end up getting like singlet shorts. Oh, and, you can buy, man. and they have branded stuff as well, like Nike added ass. Dude, added like, ass shoes. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Dim- really Dimmy, cool. you can pull off the unbranded stuff because you just say cute. You're an idiot. <laughs> I was just gonna say. Um, no, I'm serious. You can. <laughs> I was just gonna say. You got that ruggedness about you. Am I cute or am I rugged? It's both. <laughs> wrapped, wrapped Rugged, in, ruggedly cute. Wrapped into one amazing bundle over here. You're a moron. Just a bundle <laughs> of joy. Actually, speaking of ruggedly cute, do you remember... Um, Here's a bundle of joy. He's do you remember the episode today, when too. we were talking about the Ronaldo army like a couple of weeks ago? Uh, yeah. Like the soccer firm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I said, should we do... I go, do we put Ronaldo in a cop uniform or do we put like a Juventus top on Ronaldo? Yeah. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. And then you said, someone said, put put the uh, cop uniform on Ronaldo. Yeah. All right, it looked funnier. Yeah. <laughs> I actually looked at Dawn that, but it just made him look like a stripper. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because his face, you know, like he's got that, you know, boy's cute, cute charm. Face. Yeah, just smiling all tanned and oily, and then he's just got a cop uniform. <laughs> could have left that, that would have been cute. Can I, yeah. can I buy you that shirt? Uh, I could have probably pulled that off, actually. You could pull, he no. could pull that shirt off. What shirt? <laughs> that one? I've got a shirt like that. Bring I've actually got a t-shirt like that. I'd bring up my blue in the mind. Yeah, it's a Ben Sherman t-shirt. <laughs> You ever, would you buy stuff from Ben Sherman? Yeah, I've got a few Ben I was going to say, you look like the Ben Sherman I've got a Ben Sherman pair of jeans and a couple of Ben Sherman t-shirts. Yeah, all the t-shirts are pretty good quality, man. Yeah. That's the difference, quality, man, over... over it just lasts, like, you yeah. wash it and it just stays, like, good. Yeah, man. It holds, uh, holds, holds its shape. <laughs> oh, ASOS got the rights to Metallica and Nirvana, did they? Who doesn't have the, the rights to Metallica shit, and Nirvana, man? man? Dangerfield, Kmart, H&M... Uh, wait, wait, I'm out of the loop on this. They're, like... They're coming out with Metallica on the clothes. Well, like, yeah, like they do H um, and M and everything. Yeah, Tommy and I, the rookie and I, w- walked into H H&M and M the other day, and they had um, Metallica t-shirts or Iron Maiden. Yeah. As soon as we walked in, I yeah. said, "Really?" Because you know the one Big I w- wore last week. Yeah, the Metallica t-shirt. I bought that from H H&M and M in Spain. Oh yeah. Hey, I freaked out. Ren's like, we're looking around, and Ren's like, um, she's selling Metallica t-shirts. So I'm like, <laughs> everyone's selling Metallica yeah. t-shirts. So in other words, Metallica sold out <clears throat> hard. Well, Rollins, hard. K- hard. Kmart are selling hard. Rolling Stones. Hard. Kmart is selling Rolling Stones. No, um, you buy um, Iron Maiden at Kmart. Yeah, you buy, dude. I found a Megadeth t-shirt. At Target. Yeah, Black Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. Kmart yeah. has like every t-shirt imaginable these days. You can get like dude, Ghostbusters. Yeah, you can get Sonic, Mario, Indiana like, Jones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, what's going on? Like with all the licensing of the t-shirts and stuff. Yeah. You know what I think it is? Oops. I think it's the combat the internet t-shirts. Absolutely. You know, like um, the cafe. Printing. A red cafe, whatever yeah, it's yeah, called. Yeah. Cafe heaps, press, yeah. cafe press. There's heaps of those now where they're just printing them and, and selling them online. Yeah, like there's heaps of vintage yeah. vintage sites for like t-shirts and, and things like that. I reckon that's what it is. They're just trying to cash in. That's all right. That's not right. It's going to hit the t-shirt market and just take over completely. Right? Absolutely. We're going to print Metallica t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's not right. You know no, 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 no. It's going to have our three faces on it. No, no. Do you know what I've always wanted to do? Print bootleg t-shirts, but like really fake, like Metallica, but call it like Metallica. something else. Yeah, Metallica or <laughs> yeah. whatever. Just or just miss the letter or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, total bootlegs. Mega Duff. <laughs> Mega Duff. <laughs> you know what would look funny? Mega like Duff. White, white Sabbath. <laughs> like a white t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like the Metallica uh, logo, right? Like you can't actually miss it. Yeah? Um, the one with the M, like the star or whatever? No, no, like the logo, the written logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that logo? Could you imagine it like on a white T-shirt and it starts off like proper, you know, with that jagged sort of yeah. uh, style, but then just looks like it's been drawn on, like... Written, like it's all rounded at the edges written, and yeah, stuff? Yeah, just written badly yeah. and spelt wrong as yeah. well. That'd be that'd make a cool T-shirt. But that, I'm giving out ideas on the internet, man. Yeah, because it, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, it's like a really hard metal band. It's like this soft baby drawing sort of thing. Yeah. Actually, that'd be pretty funny. Huh. Like, yeah, printing a Metallica t-shirt, but like in pink and lavender. Like an ironic t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lavender. <laughs> lavender, man. Lavender with like soft yellow Metallica yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was, um, do you remember the Spice Girl t-shirt? And it like sits up over your belly button. Dude, how, old's your, <laughs> how, old, how old are your sisters? Like uh, in comparison to you? Like how many years apart? Uh, <laughs> like it's relative, yeah? Yeah, so like five each way. Roughly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Were they into Spice Girls when the Spice Girls first no, came out? Hell no. Really? Hell no. Is this just because they were like I know well, your older sister's sister grunge? Yeah, my sister's like a full on hippie grunge head, so she's like not into pop and stuff. Okay. My younger sister, no, not really. She's more like Because it just now that you're talking about licensing t shirts, I just remembered when the Spice Girls came out. They were in the paper today actually. I remember my sister had like one of their Spice World Hot, yeah. like yeah, what the British flag and stuff. Yeah, no, nah, just even the logo. But yeah. it was, I remember like the yellows and the 
Yeah, yeah. The yeah. curly colours. Yeah. My yeah. sisters loved, loved yeah. the fucking Dude, that was the worst. Christmas Day, like 1997, man. Or 96. People of the world! Oh. She got a copy of, like, the, the album, or she got a copy of, like, a compilation CD with Wannabe on it. Yeah. Man, that song was on repeat uh, for literally... <laughs> I'm just picturing the old photo albums with like the faded photos with like the Spice Girls top yeah. photos. <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah. No shit. Tizzed out hair. Yeah. And I remember like, um, <laughs> she had a, you remember Girlfriend? Girlfriend were like the Australian version of Spi- uh, Spice Girls. Was that Sophie Monk? No, no, no. No, 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 no. They were, um. That was, uh, Bardo. 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 Oh. Hey, I saw Sophie Monk. She came into JB Hi-Fi once when I worked there. Oh, my God. And let me guess. Was this pre-Botox <laughs> or post? You, you beat one off right then and there, didn't you? Let's just say I made my way to the toilet for sure. <laughs> no, nah, like I saw her and it was like... She looked mangled after a while, man. Like, she went hard on the yeah, yeah. surgery. Like, I've, I've seen a few celebrities or whatever. I didn't really get starstruck or whatever, but her, like, because I already liked her beforehand. Quite tall. Like, when I saw her, man, it's just like she had, like, a glowing, like, aura around her. She's <laughs> hot as. Hot as. Hot. I'm taking my break. Give anybody 15 minutes. I'm taking my goddamn break. <laughs> I haven't even signed on yet. <laughs> I'm taking my goddamn break. <laughs> Dude, Spice Girls, man. I was thinking about them uh, before. I was reading this article on them. Let's uh, dig deep into the Spice Girls, Jimmy. Yeah. I'm not digging deep. They were literally in the paper just like today. Let's I was dig reading the about their, They had like an ex-manager that they ended up fucking over, like an ex-producer. The ex-manager, I think he was the guy that sort of discovered him and then they did the, the final dash at the end, stole the masters and then took mm-hmm. it to some other label. But... Do you know how old they were when they first started? Young. Like 96, 97. How old do you reckon the Spice Girls were? I'm guessing like... I was going to say mid-20s. I was going to say early 20s. Because I'm Mid-20s? thinking about... I'm just thinking of like Posh's face, like when she first started. She had that real young looking face. Well, let's do the maths, right? right. <laughs> Victoria Beckham would be almost 50 now. I know how old they are. Okay. So I'm going to... Like, well, Dimmy's okay. a big Spice Girls fan. Right, right, I'm not a fan. fan. Well, let's do the maths, just, right? Victoria so, Beckham would be mid-40s now. Yeah. All right. And she would have been one of the older ones, I'd say. And that would no? be, what, 20 years ago? Jerry Heller was like 80, forget it. <laughs> She's, she was dancing around 50. She's 80? People of the world! She's 80! She's, She's 80, like when she... She gave me my osteopules. I just yeah. pictured my great aunts in Greece that are actually 80. <laughs> People of the world! And then Becca just walking in, same age. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Dude, when they when they first came out, Baby was obviously the youngest one, right? What was that? Baby, scary... Acting like he doesn't know. Posh. Wasn't Baby Posh, like 17? Hang on. Uh, Jerry Hallowells was... was G- it ginger. ginger? Yeah. Yeah, Ginger. And um, Fire Sporty. Spice. Sporty. Sporty was yeah. the, 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 Dude, the dark one. Mel, Mel B... And uh, Mel B was the youngest. She was like 18 or 19. That's a sporty one, yeah? Yeah. yeah. No, no. No, 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 no. no Mel, that's Mel C. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the gayest, gayest is, conversation yeah. ever. But the oldest... <laughs> this is the gayest conversation no, ever? No, was Mel C. What have we, we discussed? <laughs> oh, my God. Mel C had the blonde just hair. Just out of the fan club. <laughs> no, no. Just, dude, and... um, All I know was the black this is what, scary. This is what got me when yeah. I was reading this article. Yeah, Mel B and all them... and like They were, they were like mm. 18 and 19, and the oldest one was G- uh, Jerry Halliwell. Told you. <laughs> and do you remember, like... Not hard to spot. Do you remember when she came out, right? Like, as in, when they came out, everyone, face. everyone knew she was the oldest one, but it was like, oh, yeah, she's definitely the oldest one. Like, yeah. it was a big thing. Yeah. Do you know what the age difference was? Like, four years. She was, like, 22. Oh, really? That's not that much older. Dude, like, three, four years. That's the... <laughs> three, four she years, She 40. Man. Dude... The and I started like thinking that. about it. Like, we were about 12, 13 when they first came out. 11, 12. Mm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, because my six. sisters were about eight, and they were, yeah. like, all over it. So we were about 12, 13, and Jerry Halliwell looked like the oldest one at 22. Uh, so, she's over the hill. She's and done. I just, yeah, and I just... Like, <laughs> Old hag. It was really weird, because... Um, you know what I did today? <laughs> Actually, I didn't tell you what I did today. You know when you messaged me saying, what time we're doing a party? I said, oh, I'm about, I'm about an hour away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you know where I was? By the looks that you've been out and about looking sexy, and your wife feet are over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for a bike ride. Oh, cool! Yeah, dude, so into the slums or the other way? Um, yeah, well, that's the interesting thing, man. I didn't, I knew I didn't wouldn't have enough time to head towards like mm. the beach down North Road, like your way. Yeah. And I knew that I didn't want to go down. Um, I live in the good area. Spring, <laughs> Springy Road, like coming back, it's it wouldn't, yeah. just bare to a hill. Would have killed me. So I pumped the tyres up. Weak. Oh, sorry. Shit's weak. 35 degrees and he's running his bike. I used to play tennis in this heat. Give me a break. (laughs) King Gregory. (laughs) You used to. This antagonising cunt, man. I can't help it. All right. Um, (laughs) You threw him off. I went went down. I went through the slums of, like, Noble, Mm. over the railway lines, and then sort of cut through... 
Springy South Keezy. So you just look, kept going. So you look like a dealer. Yeah, on yeah. a bike. So man, like, yeah, first thing that hit me was when I hit the back end of Noble Park, like past Harrisfield, just as you get to the train line. Yeah. I came out, I took a side street, went over the drains and the aqueduct sort of area, and just hit this, hit this strip. I swear to God, I thought I was in Cambodia or something, man. Like, it had those... <laughs> Just run down looking houses. Shanty town. The smell, like all the spices and stuff started yeah. hitting my nose. And every house around me had like 100 pairs of sandals and stuff at the front door. Like I sw- It felt like another world, man. Yeah. But I kept going. I went past Keezy. <laughs> went past the Badlands. Decided yeah. To keep going. Went, kept pushing, pushing down. Like I didn't actually get on Springy Road, but I took all the back streets basically. Yeah. I went past uh, Park Mall all that way. And I ended up at um where the Dandy Bypass is. Oh, yeah. And I found a bike track and just... You take Dandy Bypass, like you follow it all the way down. Do you know where Springers is? Yeah, Leisure Centre. Yeah. yeah. All the way at the back of that. Like, I don't know Shit. where I came out. Like, I took a few lefts and rights. Dude, can... you could have pretty much gone to Edifile Beach. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, I was, was going to got... say, you are close to me, man. I got yeah. no idea where I was. You were up the road from him. But you got me, man. I hit, this, I hit this parkway. <laughs> like, there was this whole, like, little gated community thing, right? And then I sort of went around it and hit this parkway. And then before you know it, like, I've gone past the footy field. I have no idea where I am. Like, I got the... I was using Strava, so I'll have a look at the map, right, because I recorded it. But I hit these park, like, Greenlands, and it was literally, like, weepy eucalyptus-looking trees. Or is it, are they, like, we- willows? We- weeping willows, my friend. Are they friend. willows? Weeping they look willows. like eucalyptus trees, but they're... Yeah, weeping low. willows, yeah. Yeah. There's so heaps of them. your ancestors used to sit under? Yeah. Dude. They used to tell I- stories under the old willow tree. <laughs> 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 stories of the killing times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went through it, <laughs> and seriously, seriously. Man, it was all like engineered. Like there was just these big, wide spaces, and just these parkways and gravel mm. tracks and ro- and dirt tracks. And I went all the way through that. I had no idea where I was. I felt like I was in like New South or something. The story man. sounds made up. I'm, I'm not even joking. <laughs> it it may as well have been, man. Why are you lying to me? <laughs> <laughs> but then, I, do you know what hit me? The park. I thought the park was like, um, like where the hell am I? Like I don't need like the tips or something. Like shouldn't be. Shouldn't all this be still urban? Yeah. I got through that, and then there was like another community, <laughs> like another like estate, like yeah. one of those closed estates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was all green, and it looked manufactured. And like this looks like one of those Hollywood Hills sort of areas. Like yeah. there were no other cars on the road, but everything looked perfect. Mm-hmm. And I went all the way down, and I've just hit like the the street that I was on. Sort of took a bend, and all of a sudden I was at the back end of this estate. And I'm, I'm like, okay, so the grass, the greens all like stopped, like the parkways are stopped. And I've just turned and I saw the golf course. Oh. Where like yeah, it was just yeah. the golf course. And yeah. this golf course was bigger than anything, man. It was just all old people in like uh, pink fl- uh, pink polos and like you know khaki shorts. Give yeah. me riding past. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm riding through. <laughs> I'm riding through. So I've caught the back end of like all the housing estates. So like you're at the very back mm. of it, right? But then it, this is what got me. I saw like all the houses looked really picturesque and perfect. Like like they had like the basketball ring. You know, over the garage, the double garage, or they mm. had the standalone basketball ring. Yeah. There was like a bike on the porch of one of these houses. Like they're all double story townhouses. So like it looked like middle America. Yeah, dude, white there was America. a bike. No, like no chain, no nothing. Was like there a Australian flag there. on a pole? Oh, man, I swear to God, <laughs> it would have been. I guarantee yeah. you. I kept going, and then I hit like another <laughs> oh, little man. <laughs> dude, I hit another little parkway, like in this whole estate, right at the back, and it just went around in like a circle. It took like three and a half minutes to get around the whole thing. It was all wetlands. But it honestly felt mm. like you were in the middle of the bush. Like, it was weird, I'm man. surprised they didn't call the cops on you. Yeah, but there was no <laughs> one else around. Like, no one. I, I was completely alone, man. Like, if I, like, ride... Do you get raped at the end of this story? Oh, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> when I was riding back and I went through that Greenlands again, I I'm like, so. dude, anyone could be I out here. I hope so. Like, if there are any kids or anyone yeah. walking through here, like, you know, in the middle of the day, coming out from school or whatever... Like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, anyone could have been out there. But you know what caught me, man? When I was passing the houses again, I'm like, this looks too fake. There was a guy... Sitting in a garage, like as I was passing him, he was working on like he had like the double garage door open. There was like a V8 combo with like a kit on it sitting on one side, and he was working on his cruiser, like his bike. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like just tuning it up, like or whatever, like tinkering in the garage. And I thought, man, are we in Middle America? Tuning up his hog. Yeah. Yeah. And then as I kept going, man, this is the one thing that stuck out. I'm like, this is all too clean. This is too perfect. Was there a Mexican gardener? Yeah. You know, see what there was? There was a Christmas decoration still over one of the doors. Yeah. With, with the, the, it was the house with the bike out the front of it. They'll, get, they'll be getting frowned upon in that estate. Do you know what I thought? Do you know what it, my first thought was? Okay, this feels like a fake community built yeah. for like either... Like N- nuclear testing? Yeah. <laughs> I swear yeah. to God. Or like yeah. they've just got spies or military watch or... It could be a cult community. No shit. Yeah. It felt like it was a fake... Like it was a movie set. 
And I've thought about it. Do you reckon there are communities out there in, say, Melbourne or whatever? Like Pleasantville. Yeah, that are completely manufactured. Pleasantville. They're completely manufactured. Absolutely. So, like, people, like, you know, government agents or whatever, like, oh, literally live dude. there. But, like, inside the doors. Because, like, this is the very back. Like, if you ever wanted to escape from anything, you'd go there and no one would ever find so it. I don't even know about this place. It was, I don't even know where, how I got there, man. I just kept going. Like, I wasn't looking at my phone for, like, Google Maps. So everything was picturesque. The nice lawns, the houses. I've got no idea where it was. It's sort of in between Dandy South and, um, like, Chelsea. Like, in between yeah. there somewhere. Dude, it sounds like my estate. <laughs> Nah, like even d- more different. Your estate, you can sort of drive in and it's like it's picturesque, but there's people moving around everywhere. This, there was literally no one. Streets were empty. You see Bobby at the door, you know it's not a good estate. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the fucking bad neighbour. <laughs> Come walk in these jocks to get the paper. <laughs> Fuck you looking at? <laughs> the bad neighbour. <laughs> oh, seriously. And you know, one time I left my dog out the back, right? And he barks like we're not there. You've got a dog? So, uh, Jack Russell. <laughs> yeah, but when we. I've never seen it. Yeah, no, nah, he stays with me sometimes. He can't stay there. This is one of the reasons why. I brought him over to my place, put him in the backyard. We went out for a bit, and he was just mm-hmm. barking constantly the whole time. Someone let him out. Someone went, came to your house and let him someone out? Someone came, opened the back gate, and let him out. Because he was barking so much? Yeah. That's fucked. I know. I'm surprised the dog didn't attack him. Nah, he's he's dogs, a little bitch. He would have just run away. <laughs> he <laughs> That's fucked. inside the house. Because we, like, came back. We drove into the estate. And, like, I'm looking out the window and, like, Spunky's just sitting there, like, on the grass, like, looking out at the lake. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Are you was, serious? Yeah, it was all locked up and shit, so someone's climbed over and opened it. Yeah, 100%. Why, because the dog was barking? Mm. <laughs> That's wrong. They should have, like, they should have at least made a call to the cops, come and said, hey, man, can you lock your dog up or some shit? Nah, man, my estate's full of, like, old starchy fucking... Yeah, there you go. That's just why. Just stuck up. That's why. Pigs. <laughs> <laughs> I had the two pities at the crack then. No one's going to jump over that fence. Yeah, no. Nah. One, one kid tried. I love how you just said it was, you had the starchy old dudes. As I was riding through, he's like, instead of going around the community, on the way back, I thought, fuck it, I'm riding through, I want to see what the hell's going on. And the only person I saw out was it, all I saw was from the from the back, it was an old dude in a polo, like what, pale white legs and a hat. That's like, all I ever see. And he's sitting there watering his plants. Do you plants? know what this sounds like? Dude, they're picking up leaves in my <laughs> estate. Constantly <laughs> you, picking up leaves. You know like, what area this sounds like? You probably wouldn't have ridden that far, but you never know. It could have been like Patterson Lakes. Yeah, well, that's like the. the is that yeah. what Patterson yeah. Lakes is? Dude, I, I, it could have been. It, could, it actually could have been Patterson Lakes. That's a very nice area. It's on the next it, suburb to me. It, yeah, because well, there you go. It could have been Patterson Lakes. Dude, next suburb to me, dude. It, it, it the houses run back on that lake. If I check the map, I'll be able to figure and it out. And it's like super lush and green. Oh, dude, there. houses nice. there. I'll, I'll tell you well, look how houses are. Like, going from my house to there and back, I did like twenty-one k's. Yeah, it sounds about so right. So about ten k's from my joint going yeah. south, down, down like south. Just picture that. Dude, Patterson Lakes is like. I said to Our, my, that yeah. area's Turak. I said to my girlfriend, if I ever got a lot of money, I'd probably buy a house in Patterson Lakes. It's that nice. Really? Like right on the on the river. Man. Oh, like, dude, it's beautiful. Like on the inlet of the beach. Like in the houses are just right on the water. Yeah, I've never I've never actually hung out in Patterson Lakes. So, dude, seriously? Next time you like, come to my house, I'll take you out the front, and it overlooks yeah. like the the lake. And dude, it's, man, it's weird that and you, and you get a little that. boat and stuff, and you just go yeah, cruising on the I was, lake and stuff. I was just man. thinking, dude, like because the entire when I was riding around there and I saw those starchy dudes playing golf, the first thing I thought of was fucking hell, man. This golf course is huge. Like you couldn't even see. Like, you can't see from one end to the other. Like, I'm at the fence. Oh, no way, dude. Golf yeah. courses are massive. And I'm like, I, could, I literally just rode this entire little green strip, which I thought was massive. And then, like, I'm just seeing the A- golf Acres course. and acres, yeah. Acres. Yeah. You know where I, I think you went? I think you went to Waterways. You reckon? Yeah. So maybe that's what it is. And the next suburb over, there's Chelsea Heights, and then there's Patterson Lakes. Yeah, that's probably where I reckon you went to Waterways. It's that's that new estate. Yeah. And it's a really nice, it's a really but nice area. I was watching these old dudes, like, as I'm riding along, and it's like... Dude, I monitor them every day, and they piss me it off. It was about, tw- it was probably just after lunch, yeah. yeah? So they're sitting there playing their golf or whatever, and I just thought, shit, man, like, I've just ridden from the slums, and, like, the, the demographic, like, was just, the, the contrast was ridiculous. Like, by the time I got oh, out yeah, of my that, joint, yeah. you know, I'd seen, like, South Asians, I've seen Southeast Asians, so a whole bunch of Africans because I was near, right near Noble, like the train station. Big contrast. So, yeah, man. like I'm seeing all these houses. Like these houses, man, like you guys haven't cruised because Noble, like that area is an older suburb, but it hasn't been fully redeveloped yet. Like they're, <laughs> they're not knocking down all the... Sl- yeah. They're starting to do it. Yeah. But so you'll see a couple of new townhouses, but then you'll just see these old weatherboard houses yeah. and massive properties yeah. where like Mavis may have lived. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just seeing this massive contrast. I'm seeing... I'm smelling like different spices and I'm smelling yeah. incense. And, yeah. you know, you might get the, the random wog house with like the lemons and shit out the front. Yeah. Then you'll get like a South Asian house and you can smell like, you know, yeah. red curries and shit busting Coriander and yeah, ginger coriander. and shit. Yeah, yeah Like it literally... Yeah. It was a potpourri, man. 
can. Mm -hmm. As soon as I hit that estate, it was just dead until you hit the, <laughs> until you hit the water, like the Just wetlands. the smell of, like, new cars and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I was watching these old dudes, and I'm like, how old would these guys be? Because they looked... They looked older. They looked older than my, say, my mum. Mm -hmm. like, do you know what I mean? So they would have been in their mid seventies, maybe mm -hmm. mid to late seventies, still playing golf. I'm like, what have these guys been doing their entire lives in order to be able to do this now? Because like, my parents would be near retirement age, and they're still working, shaking hands down at the Freemason. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what got me. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, man. Like these guys are clearly retired, dude. I ponder that all the time. And they're playing golf, man. Dude, as I drive through my estate, like the garage doors open, they all own golf carts. Golf, golf buggies, because it's like it, it's attached to the course, and they just drive over. Yeah. And then next to that is a BMW, and like... Well, that's the thing. Patterson Lakes has got the golf course. Patterson Lakes Golf... Yeah. Oh, we've set up stuff there. Yeah. Country, and, the country club. Yeah. yeah. The country clubs. And and I, I just think about it. I'm like, shit, man. Like, in order to retire... This shadow just starts burning up the course. Dude, <laughs> golf they hate you around there. Dude, I've been yelled out for speeding. I'm doing 50. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> you hooligan. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the wrong type of people in here. I hate, I hate them, and they're standing up on their porches with their Aussie flags and their barbecues. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> and their barbecues because it's not part of it. Yeah, dude, I don't, I, I don't want to be part of it. I know, it. but oh, I just watch it. I'm like, man, I'm working like an absolute pig, and I'm not saving a single dollar. How have these guys made enough money to retire? at their age or whatever, and they're just playing golf during the day, whereas, like, my parents and, like, you know, all the people I know... Yeah, all, but it was easier for them. Me. It's easier for them. You reckon? Yeah, because buying a house is so much easier back then, right? And you can just, like... Like, well, everyone, everyone bought a house. Well, I'll tell like, you what, yeah. Patterson, to buy in Patterson Lakes back then, it wasn't a big deal. It was like, oh, yeah, whatever. I was talking to one of the old truck drivers at work, right? Bought a, bought a place, uh, Pete. He's one, Pete. one of the oldest truck drivers in Victoria. He's like 94. So what? Still driving. Jesus! Yeah. He's driving still. The B double just yeah, reversing in. Can you see him with his like half uh, half glasses? Yeah. yeah. No, but just get hey, out of the way, hey. young lad. I'm just trying to, Listen, try to swing it in. <laughs> <laughs> Runs over a dog. <laughs> Dude, he doesn't even wear glasses. Jesus. And he, he comes in, has a chat to me every day. He's cool as. But what he was telling me was he bought a house in Mordialic, right? Uh, like... Back in 57? <laughs> yeah, it was like 60 years ago or something, yeah. right? And, uh, he got bought it for like... He, I can't remember the exact figure. It was a few days back that he told me. It was like... It was in pounds. It was like 1,020 pounds or something ridiculous. Oh, no shit. So back in the day. And I'm like, how much is the house worth now? He's like, it's in Morty Alex, over a million dollars. Yeah, easy. You know what I mean? So it was just easier. Yeah, but dude, even but like, their wages were... Dude, even houses all. in Clayton, 30 years ago, you could buy a house in Clayton for 50k. Yeah, man. Now they're worth pff, average 750 to, to a mil. Yeah, it's boomed like crazy. It's yeah. so hard now. In 30 years, that's what you pay. But if you want to live in Patterson Lakes, you can buy a three-bedroom apartment next to the lake. Not new. You probably have to do a bit of renovation to yeah. it. For 375,000. Well, now? Yep. You reckon? Found it. <laughs> <laughs> Found it? You just got ready to go back. Hey, I'm alive, mate. <laughs> You should see some of the new houses being built, like along the river. Dude, I'm looking like, at some of these houses. Do you know what, man? And they're amazing. They look you know like complexes. Like I was just going to say, concrete complex. When I when I got onto the bike path off Cheltenham Road that followed the Dandy uh, Dandy Bypass, I was passing all these houses that looked like they'd been that looked like they'd been untouched for like years, as in its own little community. Right, on, and because they built the Dandy Bypass there, it must have all just been flat land, like meadows. You know what I mean? Like nothing mm. going past that point of like Keezy. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm looking at all these properties. One guy, like one guy's property, had this fence line literally on the path of the bike, of the bike path. Yeah. And it was only just fenced. Half of it was fenced off, like normally. But he had like, it was like fruit and shit, right? Yeah. And the other half wasn't even fenced off. It was just shrubs, like trees, like lots and lots of shrubs and trees. Easy to get in. Well, you well pluck some fruit. <laughs> yeah. But one of the houses before that looked like it was a massive property, and the front part of the house looked like a standard. You know, double, uh, two, three bedroom brick house, whatever. But the back end had this really modern, tall, upright, like a bungalow, but the bungalow 2.0. So yeah. it was really modern. Yeah, cool as fuck. It had like, um, weathered looking dark panels of wood. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, was, I'm feeling it. Yeah, 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 so like the bottom floor would have been just maybe like a lounge room and a kitchen, and the top floor would have been like a bathroom yeah, and yeah, a yeah. bedroom. Yeah, little bedroom, yeah. But it was all. No more than, like, just a garage sort of size. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. in, in length. But how mad would that have been when it you were a teenager? Sick. Dude, like, to have that as a teenager? Like, yeah, it looks oh, yeah. sick, man. Hey, man. Absolutely cool as. But you're, you're reminding me of... I used to watch, um like, uh, Grand Designs. It's just a show about, like, amazing homes I, people I, I watched Grand Designs in Australia yesterday. <clears throat> dude, I fucking... How cool is it? I love that show, and I just love awesome houses. Like, it makes me so jealous, like, when I watch well, it. I've seen, like, so people, like, they're building in so, like, side of a mountain. Yeah. And just, just they dig the mountain out, and it's just unbelievable, man. Insane. So cool. I've, I've watched that show for hours, like yeah, days, days. I watch all the time. Ren looks at me like, "What the fuck are you watching?" Friend of Australia shows you're an idiot. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, yeah. like I see that sort of shit and like those massive houses of excess and stuff. But then, like, 
when I was riding back from like this big ride, yeah, like it wasn't even a big ride. I was only gone for an hour and a half, two hours. I, I cut it short because I knew I wouldn't have the legs to bring me back. Because it's all uphill. Can like, bus back? It's all uphill. From my house to like that way, it's downhill, and then on the way back, you're fucked. Like, Wait. all right, man, weak. Yeah, what was your exercise of the day? Rolling he's, up a ciggy. He's gonna put your head. He's gonna put your head <laughs> Rolling up a ciggy, like, just uh, uh, strenuous, just stuff. a strenuous dump. <laughs> oh, my fingers. Uh. <laughs> Couple <of> tunnel. <laughs> Goes roll One roll is he rolls his smoke <laughs> easier a crack. His wrist like uh oh. <laughs> hey, no. this. Oh. oh I was yeah. just gonna say Oh dude. <laughs> um I was just roll. gonna say as I was riding roll back, apart. We're all fucked. Dude, I'm going up Corrigan Road or something, right? And um as I'm going past these houses and the This demogra- is the part where you get raped? No. Damn. The demographic was starting to change again. <laughs> I passed all these houses, and there was this dude standing on the side of the road, like this old dude, past the construction site. <laughs> and he's way, like, he's sort of, like, motioned at me, like, to, like, move. So I've pulled over, I was getting ready to, like, blast him. Like, what? What, mate? I'm on the road. Like, I'm not even on yeah. the footpath anywhere near him. And he goes, go faster, go faster. I'm like, faster? Yeah, I go, mate, I go, my legs are gone, man. I go, big, I had a big ride. I'm weak. I can't do it. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> all right? <laughs> anyway, he started chatting. Too weak. This guy's, like, he was in his 70s. He's Armenian. Born in Turkey, was in the military for like 20 years. Jeez. Colourful life. Flew, flew to nails. France, Hard flew to nails. France for 10 years, then came to Melbourne and had like two or three kids or whatever. He's been here like another 20 years or something. Yeah, yeah like I was trying to piece it together. Mm. And we were just like talking a bit, then like I took off or whatever. But I'm just like, holy shit, man. Like I was looking at the houses, like the, I was looking at the house that I assumed would have been his. I'm like, this guy's had like the biggest history of like anyone I've met in the last like, you know, mm. week or whatever. And he's living in this fucking house. And then as I came, as I kept going up, I just kept seeing like all the, because like I saw this, um, like an Indian looking woman, like, you know, wearing the full like get up, standing on the side of the road, like, you know, waiting for someone at a, at a corner. Then as the houses started changing, I just started seeing families like pouring in and out of like all the houses, yeah. like, you know, 10, yeah. 10 people plus in like a little shack. <laughs> but depending where they came from, that was, that's probably a fucking mansion. Yeah, like, absolutely. Compared to wherever the fuck they came from. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So then I'm looking at like these, like, picturesque houses down near the golf course i'm like what's the fucking point like yeah all these people have got stories yeah. you know what i mean yeah i know what you're saying yeah, yeah it was really weird yeah that's why like, when i watch those sort of shows i'm so like what's the fucking point of all like all that sort of shit yeah like how many people could realistically ever live like that oh, in, not many percentage wise you know what i mean like, these houses are fucking like mansions like yeah but they're not that expensive as in <clears throat> they're expensive but they're not astronomical where you look at it and think fuck it's four mil or three mil ah right, well it's expensive like yeah i couldn't go there and buy a house all right I, we could not go there but it's not like going to tour i can be like all right that's definitely not on the agenda but, yeah this this always happens to me when i go for bike rides yeah because you're just lost in your mm. thoughts like you're not talking to anyone else you're just riding and it, it's riding a bike is like what you, it's primarily what you did as a kid so the second you were able to ride from like say four or whatever through to say 15 when you started catching buses and stuff everywhere like, these are the same thoughts that go into my head. And it just, it clicked to me that, shit, man, I'm actually an, an adult now. Like, we're actually adults. We don't feel like it. Like, we talk about it all the time. We feel like we're fucking teenagers. Still. We are definitely fucking adults. So. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. we are. Like, we're, no shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it just trips me I out. I feel like, I feel yeah. like an adult. Because then I, I, Dude, I think these, about that shit all the time. I see yeah, these old actually. dudes. I'm like, hang <laughs> on. These guys have got about 40 years on me, and they're playing golf in the middle of the day. Yeah. I'm struggling to feed myself right now. Yeah. Like, at what point? Does it start changing and you start <laughs> seeing that shit? Like, I don't know. Like, it put me in a really weird mood. Like, and then I started thinking about what were my thoughts riding a bike when I was, like, eight? What the, do you know what I mean? What the hell was I thinking about then? You're going to kill someone one day. Oh, yeah, dude. You're going to snap in his head. <laughs> Without a shadow of a Some doubt. poor man. guy's buying milk at the milk bar. Oh. This guy walks past, looks at him wrong, just grabs him by the throat. How the yeah, fuck man. did you afford milk, you motherfucker? It's not even A2, about that. Uh, no, A2. Know. It's just, no, it's not just even the shit milk. milk. <laughs> because, dude, I, like I said, I don't feel like I'm an adult. Yeah. I still do childish shit. You know Dude, what I mean? I'm the biggest fucking child ever. This morning, man, because like we had the morning off, right? Because we couldn't. Uh, I mean, you had your night shift. Actually, it was whatever. nice to have the morning off because I could sleep in a bit. Yeah, I got up. It's nice. I made breakfast. Uh, like I made breakfast, sat down, watched TV for a bit, then I played FIFA for like two hours, and then I said, "Man, I've wasted the whole day. I've got to go for a- yeah, I've got to <laughs> I've got to go for a bike ride or something because this is fun. Like it's such a nice day today." And I'm like, uh, it started there because I saw like the rates on my fridge that I have to pay like in the next month. I'm getting out of here. And then like. <laughs> Dickhead, like, you're in your 30s, you just make your breakfast, you live, like, you know, you live alone or whatever, like, you're an adult, dumb cunt, like, you're actually a fucking adult, mm. like, wake up, Yeah. and it just put me in the weirdest headspace for the rest of the, the day, man. Ah, oh, fuck that, though, man, who cares? 
I know, but that, that's what I'm saying. Should we care? Nah, stay young, man. Fuck it. Otherwise, when I blow that old starchy guy picking though? up leaves from his front yard, fuck that. <laughs> but I'm I don't care if he has a yeah. gold card. He's old and starchy. I don't want to be like that. But that's the whole thing why, in my mind, it's because we're heading to that middle age. Whether you like it or not, we're heading there. Yeah, right? but and that doesn't mean why, you have to change. No, that's why my whole thing is to buy property out somewhere so I can ride my dirt bikes. I don't have to show anything to anyone. <laughs> the landscape no, no, no. dream again. Yeah. Yeah. Every week, the landscape hey. dream. <laughs> hey. Get it. You love the fucking landscape, hey. right? <laughs> Jesus. You're not invited. <laughs> I'll break no, in. No, Bobby's allowed. No, Bobby's allowed. He says Bobby. He can have one. He can have one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I'll, I'll, you know, that's the whole thing. These guys' dream was probably to settle down and, like, retire and play golf like a pansy, but that's... <clears throat> Like a loser. No, look, yeah. look, there's nothing wrong with playing golf if that's what you want to do in your retirement. Like, you can spend your Thanks. retirement any way you want. <laughs> Poof. But it just trips me out. Yeah. Like, as in my mindset is so far away from, holy shit, yeah. like... You know what this is annoying about golf courses? Like, when there's droughts and shit, water restrictions, no restrictions for the golf courses. You just lush as fuck at that grass. Really? Dude. Priority number one, keep the greens green. Yeah, because they pay for water. Like, those... Do you know what golf membership? So I pay for my water. I'm allowed to use it. <laughs> You're lucky to get water. Like, we are lucky to get water. Because, dude, I know they pay golf memberships. And stuff you know what like golf that. memberships cost? But that's taking w- a water away. So does that mean because you're rich? I- exactly. It's same. It's, it's all it's, it comes down to, buddy. Yeah, yeah. If you got the cash, do you know what it costs? Like, is it like the, thirty grand a year? I think? Look up, dude. Here's a little. Here's a little project it's for not, you right not now. That much, Jesus. Dude, look up membership. On a prestigious. Look up membership at the Royal Golf Course in Beaumaris. All right. Because to get in there, you've got to be a big knob. A big knob. I used to do flooring jobs out there, yeah? We'd rock up. They used to send me and um, this Lebo, Adonis. <laughs> they used to send the two woggiest looking guys out to the Royal Golf Course in a truck. So many times we'd get out there, man, we'd literally be getting hit by line drives and stuff. Like in the, in the, in the fairway. Yeah. Like they'd see us, they'd see the truck, we're trying to cart flooring out there, and they'd just be firing shots at us, man. They didn't care. <laughs> get off the course! Like, oh, look, Dennis, two young thugs. <laughs> Let's aim for them. D- legit. Dude, we were in, um, it was at the Royal Golf Course, or maybe the one in Mornington somewhere. Uh, th- this is going back, like, 2007, 2008. These guys won't even tell me a price. Dude, we were literally <laughs> just off the, um, the, w- went off the thing. We were just, uh, we were in the firing the range. No, they sent us, um, <laughs> we were in the firing range of the tee, tee off area, man. Literally, like, we're standing there trying to set up a marquee, and I, as I'm, like, I leaned, I leaned over to pick, like, a spike up or something, this golf ball just hits the side of the truck, like, right behind me. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I called all the casuals off, like, we went and hid, like, literally hid. Then these women, like, rock up in their golf carts. Like, you see the ball? I'm like, ball? Like, you nearly took my head off. Did you run and take cover? Dude, they That's told hilarious. us, they told cover. us to get off the course because they were playing through. Like, as in management and stuff came out. I was on the phone with my boss saying, can you tell these idiots to, like, stop because we're getting hit? But, you know, when you yell out playing through, it's just, that you can do whatever you want. Dude, there are human beings out there, man. Doesn't matter. I'm playing through, roll the Playing flies, through, bitch. like, yeah, go fuck yourself. Okay, so, they won't, through. they won't actually tell me the price for a membership because you have to sign up. Yeah, because you have to know someone first. Yeah. First, they have to screen you. You have to know the Freemason hand. I was just going to say, you've got to do the Mason <laughs> if, you're a, if you're an inter, interstate guest of... Of a person that's a member, you have to pay three hundred dollars for a day. You play eighteen holes. If you're an overseas guest, you pay five hundred dollars per person to play the eighteen rounds of golf. Have a laugh with some sherry. <laughs> <laughs> no, to literally walk around some nice grounds. That's it. That's depressing. I hate that place and everyone that plays. That, that really pisses me off about that. Like the elitism in golf, where. It's the night, like, and that's the thing, man. It's like cemeteries and golf courses. Jerry Seinfeld said it in like season seven or something. He's like, now I know, he goes, you know, cemeteries are nice, nice looking area, and now I understand why people like golf. Sometimes it's just nice to be in a well landscaped area yeah. environment. Yeah. And it's true, man. Yeah. We'd be out there in these courses, and we take a breather, you know, like for Smoko. I'd be literally sitting under a tree and just staring at like a lake. Yeah. You know, there's birds and shit flying around. I'm like, man, this is so nice. nice this says. is more reasonable. Sandringham, which is just up the fucking road, have got a golf course yeah, as well. There's one in Sandringham, there's one in um, Dingley, like, yeah. out well, that says, way. Yeah, the cost is very reasonable. What's that? <laughs> so, in fa- it's a one-off joining fee of 110 bucks. Okay. And you pay 150 a year to play. Yeah, but so dude, 260 bucks. Yeah, I've got reasonable. mates that used to play, like, tours and stuff, and they'd be paying thousands for membership. Mm. And then tea time is, like, guaranteed. Mm. Like, could these, be running late, could be whatever. Dude, some of these courses are so fucking elitist. Like, you need to know someone in there, like the head of the, the Grand Dragon. So, or, us you know, three would walk in, they'd no, straight out. They'd tell us to get the fuck out. 
Yeah. We wouldn't make it through the gates. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> there's, there's no <laughs> way we'd ever be allowed... We, like, literally, we would never be allowed yeah. on that course. We don't take cars around yeah, here. <laughs> for what? It's the most nicely well-landscaped area, man. And it's... Col- like, what's the average size of a golf course? Like, as in... Acreage? Acreage, yeah. <laughs> Look up the Royal in Bowie. Because that, that, that is by far one of the most exclusive, like, in this area. You know what I mean? And that's what really gets me, man. The fact that, like, we're not criminals, man. We're, we're not violent people. We're, you know, we don't have criminal records. We, we're jo- we have jobs. We're upstanding sort of citizens, but there's no way in hell we'd ever be allowed on a golf course, man. It's almost like it's crown land, you yeah. could say. You could say. Dude, how is that fair? In today's day and age, it's like the club that no one would ever be allowed to join. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's a golf course. It's a divide, man, between the fucking classes. It's another classes. thing to have a social club that, you know, you don't allow outsiders of, whether you have to be a union member, whether you have to be a whatever. Like, you know what I mean? And you literally have beers once a month down at, like, you know, some closed-off thing. Yeah. Or the Masons, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a society. Like, it's a fraternal society. But golf courses are physical entities. Like, they're massive bits of land. Yeah. Like, could you imagine, like, how would you explain to your son that, you know, like, it's one thing, like, you know, we can't get into a such-and-such church because we're not... We're something else. Like, yeah, all right, I understand that. Red versus blue. <laughs> Son, we're scumbags. That's why we can't yeah. go in there. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a, a, a father? Imagine, dude. Imagine, Daddy does make enough money. Dude, imagine Ralphie. you driving along. Daddy's poor. Imagine a guy. <laughs> honestly, I thought about it. Imagine you driving along near Bowie, passing the Royal, and your little girl says, oh, Dad, what's that? It's like, oh, it's a golf course, you know, blah, blah, blah. Can we go? And it's like, yeah, no, we can't. Why not? Um... Because we literally aren't good enough, baby. Not, yeah. We are just not good enough. How do you explain that to a kid? So, I can't find the acreage, but here's something even better. <laughs> Ricky Pont... <laughs> Starts off with Ricky Ponting. Interesting. Reportedly denied membership at Royal Melbourne Golf Club. Denied! That's because he's not a mason. Too bad, Ricky. Uh, Ponting, one of like, Australia's best cricketers. Had yeah, been- <laughs> Captain Ashes victories yeah. had been in the process of becoming a full-time member when eight people filed objections. One of those claimed Ponting was a man of ill integrity because he did not remember the man's name while, dri- while at the driving range. Oh, my what? God. Needless to say, Ricky Ponting is fuming about being punted. <laughs> It's even worse than we expected, dude. Like, this dude, guy getting Ricky pissed Ponting off. Ricky Ponting can't get in. <laughs> the Australian former national test captain. Because he didn't know well, fucking. What three scumbags like us? <laughs> because he didn't remember one of the guy's names. Are you kidding me? Hey, Walt, my name's like Walt. Well, I don't give a fuck what your name is. Like, do you know what I mean? Yep. It's either Alfred, Walt, fucking Le- Leslie, Gre- Leslie, Greg, yeah. Graham, 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 yeah. William. Yeah. <laughs> be one of those fucking names. And because he didn't remember, they all objected to it. Because it's all a boys club, but obviously it's like a yeah. mass fucking cult in there. But what? And that's when I think about falling down. <laughs> the golf cult. Do you, remember, cult you remember falling man. down with Michael Douglas? Best movie ever. Yeah, like, insane. You know at the end when he's like walking through the course, he cuts his hand on the barbed wire and he's losing it at that old cunt? Yeah. And he's like, what are you doing walking? He's not a, he's not, he doesn't work here. Where's his uniform? He's like, you get off my thing. He's like... He drives, he takes a driver at him and he loses it, pulls out the shotgun. Yeah. He's like, you nearly killed him with your stupid uh, ball. You should, he goes, you should have families here. Yeah. You should have kids playing. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah, that, that's a great, actually, that's a great, yeah, that's a great yeah. scene. And yeah. A great example. He, yeah. I feel like walking in there. Because that movie was just about him, like, just being just, fed up with the system and everything, yeah, isn't it? Like, that's me in 20 shit. years. If being I make stuck it. in traffic, just fuck this shit, like, I'm over it. Mm. Yeah, just it, like like, it just flips. Now, yeah. You know the turning point when he's in the McDonald's and he asks for, like, yeah, the, 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 the breakfast meal? It's all like, she says no, and you just see him slowly just start to get yeah. <laughs> And it just declines from there. I love that movie, man. Yeah, man. Sick movie. That movie's the best. I watch it every day. Like, it's sick. And he's got that, it's a crew cut, right? Like, the real. Yeah, real square, like. Straight peg, man. <laughs> Nerd. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that whole movie's great. Like, you know how he loses it in the Korean uh, uh, grocery store? Yeah. Yeah, he just goes nuts. And he's like, my government pays your government. That's bashing shit with the baseball bat, right? Doesn't he? Yeah, because everything's too expensive. Yeah. Like, it's it's just... He goes to buy the can of Coke and she's like, two bucks. And he's, he's like, like He says like, 50 cents. He's like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, it, you know... And he finally gives him like a ten cents, <laughs> and that's it. And then when the when the Korean <laughs> be one of us, that's gonna be you or me. <laughs> Something like that is gonna put us over the edge. Highway we'll robbery, be falling over, falling down all over again. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often though. Like at the at the point where we're in now, like think about it. I think it does though, man. Like, like yeah, dads always committing suicide, killing their family members, killing themselves, blah blah blah. What are suicide rates now? Like in what a- Victoria. <laughs> Oh, falling down. It's the picture, man. Yeah, man, he's a lunatic. Oh, wait, he's probably... oh yeah, he's going crazy. Living with the Uzi. What a psycho. Yeah. <laughs> you feel bad for him, man. The entire movie, you just feel bad. 
Seriously. I feel bad for him, but I'm like, yeah, I have to see his but point. You want to know the world suicide rate or the Australia suicide rate? Australia. Because you'd think at this point in time, and with so much shit not making sense, you'd think there'd be like more dudes like falling down, like literally just losing them the bananas. I think they do, but they like yeah, they the turn to drugs or become yeah. a hobo. Or so new mortality data <laughs> released by the Australian Bureau of Statistics on Wednesday. Up to date, live stats. <laughs> shows right. the overall suicide rate has increased significantly from 10.9 deaths by suicide per 100,000 to 12. And now it's the highest it's been to 16. But per per 100,000? Yeah. And the, the, but we're talking like... And there's 26 million in Australia, so yeah. what's that, man? A lot of people. That's a, yeah, <laughs> that's, a lot, that's, people, that's a lot of people, man, jumping off bridges. Like, that's um, fucked. Between uh, and saying highest Australian suicide rate in 13 years, driven by men aged between 40 to 44. Yeah, exactly. That demographic, the, oh, yeah. the, the dudes that are literally just working to no end. The falling down demographic, I call it. Yeah, man, it's fucking sad, and yeah. that's what pisses me off about this country, man. Like the fact that we live so much, so so much better than so many other countries in the world. Like we're not third world. We don't have political turmoil. We, you know, we don't worry about a bomb being dropped on us. Like, yeah, it just shows, man, that there's like there's different kinds kinds of worries, like yeah, that, you know. But these dudes are just offing themselves because of every day, man. And I get that fucking country club, and it just pisses me off. Like, how are you gonna explain to your five year old that we're not allowed in there because we're just not good enough? Why don't we go to Huntingdale and try and get a membership? The public courses aren't that hard to get memberships. Yeah, but look right? at us. <laughs> no, public courses aren't that bad. We rock up with like a baseball bat. No, no, uh, this is a like golfing ring. But they're public courses. <laughs> yeah, I play with the bat. Like, do you know what I mean? Like they're public courses. Yeah. But there's also like tennis clubs, like all types of shit. You that know what we should do? Membership. I'll get you a I'll tennis up. club in Melbourne. <laughs> we'll so, don't don't you worry. We'll test this theory, Yo, right? Mr. Rice, hey, welcome back. We'll test this theory. I'll rock up like this. <laughs> <laughs> it took a second to sink in. <laughs> Mr. Wright, welcome back, sir. <laughs> it's you, been a while. Do you want your regular? <laughs> Here's your sherry. <laughs> Graham, sort Mr. Wright out in some attire. <laughs> sort out these friends with a couple of rackets, will you? <laughs> Johnny Good. <laughs> Under company account then, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> they call him Robert from Bobby. <laughs> this is Robert. Hey, Robert. Welcome back. <laughs> Robert. You know, Rob, do you know Robert? Blast of a bloke. <laughs> Blast of a bloke? I believe they're having 11 o'clock tea time. <laughs> You'll miss the brunch. <laughs> Sit with some sandwiches, will you, Wilfred? Sit with little egg sandwiches. Oh, shit. The egg ones are my favourite. Keep egg. those, will you? Do you want the f- Extra eggy. <laughs> do you know what the funny thing is, though? <laughs> Dude, there's, um, there's a Greek comedian He's from, uh, I think he's originally from Canada And he lives in LA Oh, now. big fat dude There's a couple of big fat dudes Yeah The one, yeah, you're thinking of um, Wait, a Greek comedian from I think he's Canada. from Canada originally And he lives in LA now He's actually pretty funny Yeah, I saw yeah. him I think his name's uh, Tsaroukas, right? Angelo Tsaroukas Yeah, that's okay. right Yeah, he came down I went and saw him last I, year I It was during the comedy festival My mum bought me a ticket when saw Yeah, that's him. And he was telling <laughs> You know what's funny? Because he's another Like, he's an ex exclusive club which all these starchy old dudes on the golf course would never be a part of and i'm just going to repeat his story he was in la or something no he was in <laughs> yeah big time huh he's just showing that yeah he's fucked man he's the, he's the most angry crude dude on the planet man dude he was telling a story i think he was in la or like um like he was overseas somewhere like ireland or something he found like a greek tavern like yeah. some greek tavern so he's gone in to order like the souvlaki or something yeah and as he's standing there um, he said something to the, the guy that served him. He's like, oh, you know, one suvo. The guy's like, all right, one suvo, meat platter coming up or whatever. And then he started saying something to him, like, in Greek. It's right? got a store, yeah. Like, he said something to him in Greek, you know, about the shop or whatever. And the guy behind the counter's like, you're Greek? He's like, yeah. It's like, Pfft. He goes, he goes, come with me. Come in the back. Don't eat this filth. He's like, yeah, don't, don't eat this shit. We've got a pot going in the back. <laughs> like a red <laughs> sauce, like casserole. The proper the, stuff in the back. The way he said it was like, which means we've got a pot. Like, we've back. got a pot going in the back. Forget this shit. <laughs> like, and he got taken into the kitchen and like, they literally just set out a spread. You know, like if you came, went to my mum's house. Or the something. authentic spread. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought, you know what? That's a club that these starchy dudes would never be, actually be a part no, of. They no, because they'll look at him and be like, and in Greek, they're like, yeah, 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 shit. Don't eat this shit. I wouldn't even worry about those, man. Fuck those um, guys. I'll have um, two dolmadas, dolmadas, <laughs> and, <laughs> and just a small tub of the uh, is it the, is it the Greek olives? <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the Greek person behind the counter, like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Like, <laughs> just give him the shit. Fuck it. <laughs> Pretty much, man. Yeah. 
<laughs> you can't be part of our goddamn club. Such a tomatoes and <laughs> rice in a soft little pouch. That sounds delicious. And what's that spread you have? Is it taramis? <laughs> taramis? I don't know, man. It's just... I don't, I, dude, I, I don't know how to take it. Garlic sauce? <laughs> You mean the Ziki? Dude, fuck <laughs> Ziki. Dude, fuck those guys, man. I hate them. I hate those guys. Bunch of poofs, man. <laughs> They're starchy. They've had nothing in common to this. You know what? And we'll never losers. be like that. Dude, because that's if not you, us. If you I want to be like that. If you nah, get to that. somewhere, nah. if you get to somewhere, whether because you fell into money or you worked hard or whatever, and you want to buy like greater things, and by all means, you're free to do whatever Absolutely. you want. Absolutely. It's just privilege. It's just the entitlement and the sense of privilege that pisses me off. Yeah. That's what pisses me off, man. That's the whole world, though, And man. the fact that they built a golf course literally is like six suburbs long, which, which is probably Crown Land. For Royal, Royal, it's probably Crown Land. It's literally... Royal Melbourne. <laughs> literally? Yeah, yeah, they probably use Crown it's Land. It's literally... How many members do you reckon Royal, the Royal Golf Course has, well, man? Oh, I can tell you that. Like, think about it. It says it fits 15,000 spectators all up. Fuck. As in, for... for yeah, for tournaments events. and stuff. Yeah. Um, but like members, good Act- shot. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. Bravo. <laughs> the athleticism of that cup. No, it's just so <laughs> stupid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I don't. That's what really gets me, man. The, like, how how do you justify that today? You ca- you can't, man. It's just it's a way to separate the classes, my friend. <laughs> yeah, you'll never separate classes as long as shit like that still exists. Mm-hmm. Like, literally. That's they're, exactly right. That's just, like, entry-level. They're very hush-hush. Entry-level class separation. What do you mean? As in, to what kind of information they give out, like... It's basically the whole Freemason membership is... Yeah. That it comes... It, like a starter pack yeah, comes for the Masons, it, nah. comes with the Royal Golf Course ad- admin a warm, <laughs> application. A, a warm hand towel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two mints. <laughs> And a douchebag. A brass <laughs> clip money holder? Like, it's yeah. just a money clip? With the uh, eye on the front of it? Yeah. 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 Bad, bad. It's like, so, Donald, you've uh, joined our club. Here's your complimentary money clip. <laughs> just, <laughs> and here's a $1,000 to get you on your yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> I hope All in $100 <laughs> notes, you know? Like, your son gets a scholarship to St. Kevin's, like, just oh, off yeah. the bat. <laughs> yeah. and, he's and, what, and, and what are my fees, Walter? Oh, it's on the house. So <laughs> they will figure it out, don't worry. <laughs> But there is a little favour that I'm going to ask you. Yes, that's it. <laughs> and it all comes yeah, with papers, see? man. But there is this there is little one, something. One thing that we need to ask <laughs> of it's, it's nothing, nothing that, major. But it's just that three point five billion dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I just need you to sign off on his property deal. <laughs> that political prisoner we have over in the Cayman Islands, he needs to seek refuge for a few weeks. Do you reckon we can uh, bring him here? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it worth your while. Seriously, man. We're, joking, we're joking, it's so true. That's true. So true. So true. Um, <laughs> Cunt. I don't know, man. Can we feel spy? Like, I don't want to feel spiteful or whatever. It's not that I, I am. I feel, I feel better than them, man. They're not as cool as me. Fuck them. Yeah, yeah. They don't know we're near as cool as Johnny Boy. What's that? Fuck those jokers, man. Some just <laughs> mad dog. Fuck those jokers, they say. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wiggling my ass hitting a ball all day like a retard. Oh, you, know what, you know what? Golf? I, golf? I actually, yeah, well, I've actually gone to that Aces or whatever and just hit some balls at the golfing range because it's awesome. Not I, like, that's fun, man. Yeah, but, but to sit there and think you're better... That's what pisses me off. Yeah. Dude, the, the sport of golf is hard, right? Dude, it's hard. To hit that little ball... And also mentally... Kilometres yeah. distance in probably three strikes. Tiger would, Tiger would snap and slam the hundred... <laughs> yeah. It's probably the hardest sport I've ever played. It's, it, I've, it, it really is. I've, I've never... Technical-wise, like, to hit that ball precisely yeah. every time is imp- fucking impossible. It's, it's a play. hard sport. But you've got to judge the wind. You've got to judge this. You've got to judge that. It's just the elitist... Attitude. Attitude behind it and the culture behind it. That's what pisses me off, man. I mean, that's why, like, it was such a big thing when Tiger... Could you imagine Tiger Woods, man, Dude. coming through the ranks? Remember how you were talking about, like, old statue guys, like, looking down their nose at you and shit, like, over their <laughs> yeah. glasses? Every time I drive through my fucking estate, they just stare at me. Oh, dude, they're standard. Yeah, because... Like, you... literally, like, not, like, just stare, but, like, following me the whole way with their heads, like... Yeah, they think you're going to do something wrong, like a, a criminal act or something. They think you're, you're sus. And you know what? The only people in my area that don't... Okay, so in my area, like everyone parks on the street. Yeah. So as you're driving down, you have to give way. You have to pull over and give way to the give way to the other cars. Whoever's coming, coming yeah, it's coming for you. Like Go all on. the time, you have to do it. And, like, the ones that don't acknowledge you or say thank you or ever let you go are, like, the soccer mums in the fucking BMWs, the older soccer mums. Standard, man. Dude, their fucking noses are in the air and they're just, it's my right, I'm going, fuck you. And it fucking pisses me off. Like, there's no consideration yeah. for anybody else. Dude, fucking, I hate it We're so setting much. up a wedding on Sunday. And we're doing a call for the north. <clears throat> like, big, big houses. And it was a home wedding. 
and her neighbour dro- just jumped in to say her congratulations and whatever. And she comes to me at the van. It's fucking like 40 degrees. And I'm loading this stage into the van. And she looks at me and she's like, oh, because she saw my tats and everything. I was sweating. I look like a crim man. I had the beard. <laughs> and she looks at me and she goes, oh, I left my car unlocked, but there's not much crime around here. She's, you know what I mean? Like, oh, looking straight at me. Oh, she said like, that. Yeah. Who the fuck would say that? And I looked at her and I go, I actually, actually, I actually looked at her and I said, oh, is that your car, is it? And she goes, yeah, it's a Honda, but they only still Mercedes around here. Look, what am I, part of fucking Apex? <laughs> What's going on here? She yeah. actually said that to you? Yeah, man. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. At all. Like, seeing the bitches in my, like, bitches, <laughs> the stuck up people in my area, it doesn't surprise me yeah. a little bit. If oh, I would have said something to you, like, yeah, I'm not going to get done for that nah, again, don't worry. You know what? If, if, I didn't ha- if I didn't have my work at the van and work up yeah. there, I would have headbutted her three suburbs down. Yeah. Who the fuck would say that to someone on the That's street? That's that mentality, dude. Dude, I was Big doing time. my job. I was working. It's not like I was just walking past and looked sus. That's disgusting. But that's, that's, that's the attitude these people have. That's they're, the they're the wives of the golfers in the golf club. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wags. Yeah, man. <laughs> they're the ones that are sucking off bellboys and fucking the gardeners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. the ones, yeah. yeah. Their husbands are out being CEOs. Yeah, they're the ones that are... Acting like do-gooders, but uh, when Jorge comes to cut the grass... Clean the pool. Jorge, clean, <laughs> Jorge comes to clean the pool. Yeah. Jorge, they're still, he's still Hispanic. Like, <laughs> has to be. Has to be. has to be, man. He's Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or Jeff from Jim's Mowing. You know, he comes around. Yeah, he's not cutting just the grass, you know what I mean? That's what got me, man. I caught an Uber the other day to go to the uh, Mundane Green fight. I, I Ubered it. I said, fuck it, I'm going to be there for five hours. I'm going to have a few beers. Like, it's fuck it. late, man. Oh, that fight was fucked. Yeah, they yeah. finished just after midnight, man. Did you watch any of it? Did you see yeah, oh, you, I live you streamed watched it? You live streamed it. Did that you see illegal, it? Oh, you know that guy that got done on Foxtel? He live... He's, mm. He got done for it. As in, Foxtel called him. He said, stop live streaming it. He's oh, like, what? I can do what I want. I paid for it. <laughs> right? And he, 150,000 people got onto his stream. Jeez. So I was sitting there watching it. And um, yeah, it was just ridiculous. Did you see the fight? I watched the highlights. It's the highlight package. There wasn't any highlights. There were no highlights. But dude, I saw Green, the first Green round. should not have won. I saw the cheeky little jab from Mundine in the first round. <laughs> did, did you see Mundine's the explanation for that? Been... He said that he did, like the ref wasn't even telling him stop, go, like nothing. Like he was just rambling well, Today the like news nonsense. came out and then people were saying that, like actual officials saying the ref shouldn't have been refing that. He had no idea what was going on. Yeah. He said, Mundine's defense was exactly... Do you remember when Mayweather punched out, was it Ortez or someone, or Cotto? This was years ago. Like, the guy was fighting. If you look it up, the guy was fighting, head-butted um, Mayweather, mm-hmm. and Mayweather, like, cracked it, and then the refs deducted a point. Then this guy's gone back up to Mayweather and, like, trying to hug him and, like, even tried to kiss him, and Mayweather, like, shrugged him off, like, fuck off, you know what I mean? Fine. And then, like, the ref's gone, like, you know... Like, the ref hasn't said anything. Like, go ahead, you know, go. And <laughs> Carry other, on. <laughs> yeah, and the other guy had his guard down. Mayweather just looked at him, snapped him twice in the face, knocked him out. Like, yeah. had his gloves down, mm. and everyone's like, oh, what the fuck? And, and Mayweather's defense was, uh, you're in the ring, cover, protect yourself at all time. Ref hadn't waved I mean, me away. Ref hadn't said anything. He was every, just standing there. Every right. Yeah. You're free. And that's basically what Mundine was saying as well. It's like, the ref was just fucking babbling nonsense. He didn't say, you know, go to my corner. He didn't say anything. Yeah. I just got, you know, sh- shoved a little and bit. And regardless of that event, though... Mundane should have won that fight. Yeah, and then they were oh, saying, you Mundane should have won. dude, the oh, last, dude. the dude, last all over six him. rounds, all over him. literally, the if you give that, if you give Green the first four, the last six, yeah, Mundane, Mundane was won. just going forward, forward. All clean, Green clean was doing, hits. all clean Green hits. was doing was basically lunging in with a couple of sloppy sort of jabs and then just covering up and clinching. Yeah, yeah. Or Mundane would throw a flurry, Green would try to counter, yeah. and it'd just be sloppy counter hits and then just falling on him. Like, and I don't care up. for either one of them. Yeah. But, Mun- like, looking at it as a, from a spectator and a fan, yeah. Mundane should have won that fight. And yeah. the judge came out and said, I made a mistake. In other words, the third judge, the wow. one that had judged it like a, a total, you know, one-sided affair, because the first two judges called it really evenly. It was 94-94. The one round... 96-94. Yeah. And the third judge, 98-90. Like... Where did you get 98-90 yeah. from? And then the third judge, like literally like round seven or something, yeah. gave it to Green all the way. And it's like, man, Mundine clearly won that round. Easily. And if you didn't give him that, like if you get, if you reversed it, it would have been a draw, an anonymous draw. Yeah. Like literally down, straight down the line. Yeah, far out. But yeah, they, they, I reckon but it's because they, they felt that he'd been robbed the first time they fought 10 years ago. Yeah. And then just gave it back to well, him. I've got to say, and it Australian boxing really. is a fucking embarrassment, man. Oh, it's a joke. It's a joke. And hopefully this kid that's fighting Pacquiao now will bring it back up, man. Jeff Horn, he's a proper fighter. And hopefully he puts on a show. Even if he doesn't win, 
put on a show because Australian boxing is fucking nowhere, man. It is nowhere. Like, I was watching it going, what is this rabble? We have better fights on fight night, man. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the undercards are pretty shocking as well, man. Dude, uh, 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 that rugby player, ex-rugby player that fought that fat kid. Yeah, that was... Like, that come was on, man. Why? And then he knocked him out and tried to catch him because he felt so for him. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, really? Like, you're going to put... I'll show you the picture and yeah. you're going to be like, what What kind of mismatch is this, all right? I'll show you a picture you of it. You didn't see it? No. Nah. Dude, dude, this is... Uh, it was a joke. Uh, what was his name? Wade Cooper. Yeah. Wade Cooper versus... What was his name? I, I can't remember, man. Um, the, the, it's weird, man. Like, the whole point, like I was, I was trying to say, was when I caught the Uber, I got in the uh, uh, car and it was an Afghani Frank. dude. I started chatting to him and he said he was Azari, like, from Afghanistan. He'd been here, like, five years, all on his own, like, working, you know what I mean? Like, all his family's back there. I go, why'd you come? He goes, it's unsafe for me to be there. I go, why? Like, politically or what? He goes, yeah, he goes... Is that a joke? Or is that a joke? I actually saw that photo, and I didn't realise that kid was a boxer. Like, I thought it was, like, his son or something. Dude, he's had three fights, three losses. <laughs> Looks like he's a fat son that he's Dude. given his too much ice cream. Yeah. Dude, Qu literally. Quade Cooper was an Australian international rugby player. Yeah. Look at the size of him. So I'm guessing... Look at his rip... Like, the, the, the rip guy won, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He tried to catch him on the way down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they actually... That's a, that was an undercard fight, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Action shot of the fatty getting dropped. <laughs> that's mad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's just, it's a disgrace. It's I was a, just it's a fucking I was just story. saying to this this Uber dude, like why'd you come and all that sort of shit? And he's like, Man, if I stayed over there, I probably would have died. I just saw the laptop light off, is that alright? Yeah, yeah, no, it's just because his phone's plugged in. It's just uh sensing it. Just you just started loading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but he said if I stayed there, I would have died. I'm like, why? Uh, you know, his religious and political alignments are different to whoever's in power, and that's enough of a reason, like, to think that you're going to die. Like, literally. That's insanity, dude. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just it's trying to show you. Keep showing me sneaky pictures of the fact yeah, getting back. disgusting, that's dude. hilarious. It's absolutely disgusting. It's like one of my old mates we used to tease, like, back in the gully. Like, literally. Old mates we used to tease. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, you imagine, gr like, living in that sort of shit to the point where, and he goes, man, he's working as an Uber driver here. Over there, he had, like, engineering degrees, which aren't recognised by, like, you know, Australian um, yeah. educational standards and stuff, for whatever reason, right? So he's just working, like, two, three different jobs to send money back to his family, trying to set up life here. Like, five years on by himself, man. And I'm thinking, fuck, man, this poor guy, and he thinks he's doing better. Like, he thinks he's doing well here. Yeah. Just, then, just perspective, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. And like talking to that Armenian dude today, you know what I mean? Army 20 years in Turkey dude, as an tough. Armenian. That's tough. Man. Yeah. That's fucking tough. Like that, those are the old schools are hard as nails, man. Like they're not scared of nothing. Nothing. But yeah, seeing the way he lives and stuff. Yeah, like, man. Yeah. Just going back to that Lebanese kid or whatever you said was an Uber driver. Was oh, the, yeah. Afghani. Afghani kid. Um, like how long are they going to hold on to all that religious fucking bullshit, man? Like, What do you mean? Like, they war. They kill each other over religion and shit, right? Like, Don't we do that here? Do you mean, like, that... Yeah. To that extreme, Fuck though, off. Like, fuck off, we're full. Yeah, but I mean, like... Cronulla riots. He had to leave in fear of his life, right? Yeah. Over just, like, religious bullshit. Yeah, okay, it's religious bullshit to you, but to other people, it's... The, well, do you know what that, you know what that argument's like? But, like, they're killing over Dude, it. Like, you do you know what that argument's it. like, man? Right? All the women are out there saying... Or, or, all the white... All they, the whites, right? the times, I feel. All the waspy dudes, right, are saying all the Afghani and Pakistani women and, like, you know, in the hijabs and niqabs and stuff, like all the attire, like mm. the Muslim attire, they're all so oppressed and it's against their will. Dude, a hijab looks exactly like a nun's fucking, um... Mm? Uh, what's it called? Uh... What's, the, what's the, a nun's uh, outfit called? I keep forgetting. The fit out. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, you know, the... Yeah, um, the whole hat and everything. Yeah, like, yeah. It's got a name. I keep forgetting the fucking name when I need to remember it. I'll, I'll, I'll get on it. Um... You know, like what a nun wears. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How is that any different to what a Muslim woman would wear? Yeah, not not that much. Different. A habit. It's got a habit. Yes. Yeah, it's got a habit. A habit. Yeah. It looks exactly the same. A habit consists of everything's like, concealed tunic, except for a face. Covered. Yeah. Yeah. How come you're not sitting there saying that all the nuns are oppressed? The only difference I'm thinking is like around the face, it's a bit more floppy. The Afghan one. <laughs> Floppy. Like around the face, like it's not like tight fitting like that. Oh yeah, no. Okay, well, it depends. It depends where you are, dude. Like if you go to dandy during the middle of the day, you'll yeah. see all types of uh, Muslim garb. Yeah. yeah, like full burqas, full whatever, and then yeah. you got the hijabs, and it's different. Depending on you know, what, depending how serious you are, depending on what which religion you are, yeah. blah blah. But it's that argument, dude. 
if you're going to say, like all these waspy idiots are going to say that all these uh, Muslim women are oppressed and they're just dying to get out. That's why, dude, that's why Sex and the City 2 was cast as racist. Do you remember what happened with Sex and the City 2? Dude, look up. Oh, no, they went to like... Um, yeah, they were in yeah, the Middle, Middle East. East. They're yeah. In like, yeah. Look up, Sex and the City 2 controversy. Slutting it up in the Middle East, they were. Islam. Yeah, they basically... Re- Taking their filth to the Middle East. Dude. <laughs> and they've got the balls to say that, but they don't call nuns oppressed. But are you comparing me to those waspy dudes that say that? Like, no, no, all, no. All I'm saying is like... No, no, what I'm saying, it's, okay, it's that old age-old argument. Accused of being like, anti-Muslim. Yeah. And condescending towards... Yeah, exactly. Because they're acting like everyone's... To Arab women. Everyone's yeah. ignorant and oppressed. It's like, dude, that's your fucking lifestyle. That's your choice. You know what I mean? No one's going to tell a nun not to wear a, a habit. And then you got, like, yeah, yeah, Pauline Hanson, all them. Pauline Hanson has the balls to say that. They're all oppressed and la la la. It's like, what does she know? What do you fucking know? Has she been there? Dude. But that's what I'm saying. I've got a feeling she's going to be the next Prime Minister. Oh, man, have you seen the support? Dude, her and Donald together, like, I can Dude, just see Dude, have it. you seen the support for Pauline Hanson? Can I, can I, was I thinking tell, about can tell you what's going to happen? <clears throat> you know how everyone said they're going to move to Canada? Everyone's going to move to New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Zealand. Or, or everyone's going to go to Canada. <laughs> Have you seen the support for Pauline Hanson right now? Yeah, I was listening Numbers on the radio. through the roof. Dude, I was listening on the radio. Like. Through the roof, man. Fuck Pauline, man. I'm not even joking, man. Dude, like, they- did, you see what he, uh, did you see what the One Nation candidate said? This was about a week ago. Did you hear about it? Dude, David... Oh, do you want to start your name? David, for a start. David? Start you already. What do you think his name is? Oh. is it, can, I t- uh, can I have a couple of... Something guys? wet and stale. <laughs> nah. Start you. It'd either be like Lloyd or Smith. No, no. Or I'll, like give you, I'll give you a hint. Brown? You'll get it right away if I give you a hint. Because I'll just tell you, like, as in the reference. What do you used to call Arthur from work? Archibald, Archibald. <laughs> David really? Archibald. That's fucking statue uh-huh. to the max. Dude, you could just picture this guy, David Archibald for the One Nation <laughs> candidacy. You know what I mean? You we, can just see it. We believe in the... Dude, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's the Pilbara um, candidate, <laughs> right? He's in the West Australian election. He stands by his comments he made in 2015 that branded single mothers lazy and responsible for a rapid rise in the portion of the population that is lazy and ugly. And ugly. An article he wrote in 2015 for some journal. What, is Archibald a good looker, is he? Dude, he called for welfare for single mothers to cease, saying that they are too lazy to attract and hold a mate. That's what a One Nation candidate said two years ago. All right, well, I'll I'll be honest. I come from a single parent home. Yeah. What's wrong with me? I don't agree with that guy. Too lazy. Fuck no. That's what he said. Too lazy to attract and hold a mate. Meanwhile, the party leader, Pauline Hanson... Is a single mother herself. Sorry, they're not into young boys, Archibald. <laughs> so, so, wait, Pauline Hansen's a single mother. She married an immigrant and had kids with an immigrant. Yeah. When, when she was 16 or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. but she still did it. Yeah. Like, and, so, and, and this cunt yeah. is a candidate for One Nation in Western Australia. Fuck Archibald. And he has fuck Hansen. Meanwhile, you had that other candidate from One Nation, that Asian one, that was saying all gay people need help. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, we, we're staring at this and no one's doing anything. Everyone's like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. I think, yeah, it does matter because all of a sudden, Pauline's still fucking here. All of a sudden, we're living in fucking Germany, Germany Nazi fucking two. Pretty yeah. much, man. Pretty much. No shit. What, pretty much that's what's happening. And around Australia. Like, it's... Uh, and Wool, Wool and Gabba, where the fuck she lives. We well, you know how Australia always follows suit with America. Like, Absolutely. Like, policies really. and shit. Man. Yeah. Like, man, Donald, Pauline's the perfect candidate. Dude, Turnbull like, will, be, will be licking Trump's ass now. Campbell's fucked. Absolutely licking his ass, fucked. mate, because... Exactly, well, we're the little brother. We, are, we are America's man. little brother. What happens... Little, little brother. What happens in 10, 15 years, 20 years? Can you imagine how... Like, imagine the nuttiness that's happened in the last 12 months. Imagine, like, 10 years from now, man. If they, if they get through... Moving and just keep going, yeah. They just keep going with it. What's it going to be like to live in Australia? No, I'm moving to Scandinavia. I'm being dead set honest, man. Yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah, that's scary, dude. man. That is fucking scary. When you look and see what's happening with Trump, and he's gone all out, right? Have you seen all the shit that he's done in the last week, since the last podcast? Well, give us give us a, a, a racist state in the, in the States, like Texas. Oh, is Texas like a yeah, next Texas, state? Alabama, Arkansas. So, so Australia will just become one big racist state, yeah. as in a country, an island. We're an island, so it'll just become one racist island with just whites. Queen, so Queensland like, will just grow and spread. Absolutely. <laughs> like, 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 like crabs. <laughs> have you seen these. that guy? Well, then Gabba just grows. Have you seen the guy in the states? The video's going viral. My um, what uh, uh Pitsky's cousin sent oh, it to me. Yeah, yeah. We'll play a bit of it. This is on. It's just a facey rip. I didn't actually get to look for a proper thing of it, but it's it's insane, man. Hang on. Um, 
Hang on, look at this. I'll see if it's still up. I'm, I meant to find a proper version of it because I, I, I got no idea who it is. I seriously can't wait to eat. I'm so hungry. What? I was talking to Trollman about my food needs. What do you want to eat? <laughs> Maybe a bacon deluxe. You and that fucking bacon deluxe. Mix it up a bit. It's my go-to when I'm really starving. I know. But you what did you eat? You know what you should get? I did. I'm you know what you should get? Oh. A red rooster roll, man. Oh, dude, look at this. I've been having one of those in ages. I always get extra sauce, dude. Yeah. All around the world, wherever you look, if you see conflict, people diligently slitting each other's throats, whether it's in the Middle East, whether it's in Africa, it's because of diversity. People who are different from each other trying to share the same Think you had those hand signals as well? And look here in the United States. Diversity of religion. We have had the civil rights movement 50 years ago, and blacks are still riot. When Mexicans and other immigrants come to this country, they create enclaves. They don't get along with blacks either. There's always this tension of, do we have enough representation? You don't agree. All of the major conflicts in the United States are really based on diversity. Diversity of ethnicity, of language, of religion, but primarily of race. So, what would you like to see? Would you like to see a white country? I think most whites very clearly prefer to live in a majority white neighborhood. And I know that's the case because I see what they do when the neighborhood becomes majority non-white. They move away. They would never admit that they prefer a white society because they've been browbeaten into thinking that it's wrong to say that. But that's the way they feel in their bones, and I know that because I see what they do. So what would you want to do? So, so oh, you, well, you want to live in a, in a white only country? Dodge. Not necessarily quite only, but shit. a country that is scary, right? clearly Actually is. based on a European model in which whites will basically remain the overwhelming majority in perpetuity. Okay, how do you achieve that? Well, that's an excellent question. We were about to do that. Up until 1965, we did have a country of that kind. I can tell you how to <sighs> lose that country. You lose that country, of course, by abolishing the kind of immigration policy that was maintaining a white United States and letting in people from all over the world. My you people. lose that yeah. when you browbeat and hypnotize yeah. Americans thinking that... That guy's a white starch, isn't he? It's a max. You lose that KKK. when you have them chanting, white Americans chanting, that it'll be great to be a minority. But that changed in 1965. I do agree that that Immigration Act was one of the most important... Oh, maybe the most important law in the history of the United States. I think we can agree on that. Yes. Now, and yes. that has changed the country. Which, right? Now, I want to change it back. How? How? Ah, uh, well, Donald Trump has got some first good steps in mind. He no, why is he wrong? No more illegal immigrants. This guy's insane. He's disgusting. He wants to end birthright citizenship. He wants to put at least a temporary ban on Muslim immigration. Those are all excellent first steps. In any case, as I say, the economic, the, economic arguments, the economic arguments to me are far less important mm -hmm. than what happens to the United States as a cultural entity. I am loyal to my people. My people are What's of this one, European dude? origin. Like a TV and program I or something. Yeah, my something. descendants so and their descendants to be able to enjoy a European culture in a nation it's like, that it's has even like trying to hide your racism. Did you just say special law and special law? We'll stop Thanksgiving then. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, because, uh, that's what, what, happens with a, what happens with, with Asians? What happens with uh, African Americans? What happens with Latinos? What happens with Native Americans? What happens to my people? They presented me with a very limited view of the United States. That is the view that the Japanese have for Japan, Mexicans have for Mexico, Indians have for India. No I'm other stop country the except for Oh, that, that is infuriating. That is infuriating. So who is he? Sorry, I missed that. I actually have no idea. What program is that on? What is that saying? I don't know. It's literally just TV. It's a link off Facebook. I thought it was like affiliated with like government or something. I was like, I, I have no idea, man. I just literally got the link sent to me. On the, on the, on the, what we were just watching, on the side of the TV, it had like a symbol. Is that... I did it? Yeah. Um, hang on a second, man. I actually don't know. Uh, wait, I'll look it up now. That's fucking infuriating, dude, man. how much do you want to just beat this guy into a pop? I know why. Dude, <laughs> why? I, I told you, why I, I want to take his eyes out with an ice cream Dude, scoop. it's ridiculous, man. That is fucked. It's scary, but this dude... Hang on, he's talking about... Oh, here you go. His name's here. Jared Taylor. Jared is in J-A-R-E-D. Taylor. I never actually saw it. Hang on. And it says, he's written a book called... Oh, he's an American white nationalist. Yeah. He's an editor for the American Renaissance. Renaissance. Yeah. Yeah. He's on... He's, on, he's talking to George Ra uh, Ramos. There you go. I've got, I've got the actual video here. So... So it's full legit. So video. if you look up his yeah. name, you'll come up with the video. You can watch it in your own time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll find... I'll find a link, like a proper link or something. We'll put it up through the page. He's got a book called White Identity. Yeah. But why? 
Dude, those cunts still mill around. You know what was funny? When I ran, after I rode off from that um, uh, Armenian dude, yeah, like I rode, I shook his hand and rode off. Literally the next corner, as I was pulling up to the lights, there was a HQ ute just pulled up and literally Reg was driving it, man. Just, and he just had like the glasses on, just staring straight ahead. Just didn't even acknowledge the fact that I was like trying to like get around him. You know, I'm on his, <laughs> I'm on his, I'm on his Twitter feed. Oh, um, and he goes that Jared Taylor fag. Yeah, he wrote at Facebook just deleted my account. So Facebook deleted his account with about four thousand contacts. They sent me no notice or justification, nor is there an, any appeal. Well, suck on that, dick face. <laughs> Yeah, man. I I'm sorry. That's fucking infuriating. When I was man. watching that, I get sad because, like, even though there's like a lot of racism today, like, there's still also a lot of unity. Like, yeah, you know, like in our work, man. Like, yeah, yeah, we use the work as yeah, state like. Culture. Everyone's different, we, but we all get along like family, man, and it's great. Yeah, because we're both thrown in the same situation, and, and I we love survive. it. Like, I love having friends from different, from different dude, countries, and that's. But watching that guy, man, he's gonna fucking undo all that shit. That, and that's the thing. That's what I said to the Uber like, taking dude. it back to the start dude, again. That Afghani dude. That's what I said to him, right? Because he was a Zari, whatever. And I said, I got, I understand, like, over there, you got, like, the Sunnis losing it and the Shias losing it and, like, all the just staples of Islam, right? I go, but you know what the, the funny part is, is you come here and now you're just Afghani. And you're learning to get along because yeah, you're the only ones out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like work. We're, the, we're in that situation and we all band together to help each other out. That's it. Like, yeah. we're all in the same shit. We're on the same level and we just do what we have to do to get through. Yeah. And he laughed. He's like, yes, you are right. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm right. Is yeah, you're right. Because you're 100% right. Over there, like, they're throwing <clears> each other's eyes out. And it's like anywhere. But as soon as you take them out of that and put them in a new environment where they have to survive, people band together. doesn't matter where you are. It's like a survivor. <laughs> you know what I mean? But even, like, like there's some people at work that I'm, like, I've gotten really close with, like, whether they be Asian or Arab or whatever. Like, mm. And if they hadn't been working at my work and I just saw them out on the street somewhere, there's no way at all I'd think that I'd have anything in common with them, right? Like, that's just... Where you've come from, yeah. Like I just, I wouldn't. I feel like not in a racist way, but I just no, feel like I dude, wouldn't want to because I have nothing in common, like like morals, everything. But we're all so similar, dude. Like we joke about the same shit, we laugh about the same you're shit. You're talking like, to two guys that grew up in the most diverse suburb in in Australia, dude. Yeah, and like, that's been voted. That's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. And like that's why, like man, that's why I get on a train and talk to whoever's next to me. That's why, you know, it comes. It also came with traveling as well, man. I man, I remember one of the coolest conversations I ever had. I was in Greece. This was the first stint that I did there, like on my own. Middle of winter, my co- I was staying with my cousin at the time. He's a sports teacher, and he was gone for the day. So I had a mitt. Yeah, mitt. <laughs> and um, I left his apartment and went to the local strip, you know, of the local town or whatever. And I, I used to basically take my Zorba, laptop. Zorba, Zorba town. <laughs> oh my god, you redneck! <laughs> Zorba town. Um, Zorba lane. Is go that down it? to Zorba town. <laughs> um, basically, like I'd take my laptop, go to the. There was like a Gloria Jeans or like a Starbucks or something like there. There's a whole bunch of cafes with free Wi-Fi. This was 2009. Do you mean Zorba bucks? <laughs> Why are you such an ignorant idiot? <laughs> I'm not being ignorant. I'm making a joke. <laughs> that was um yeah. That's- so that was like the start of 2010 Zorba when Wi Fi was always like a rarity, like you'd always look for it. Yeah. Not like now where you can get it anywhere. So I'd plant my ass at this cafe, I'd order like a sandwich and just sit there and just chew up time and just chat or Skype or whatever. And one day it was raining and it was cold and there was only one other dude out there and he was um, Bulgarian, I think, or Romanian, something like that. I took a photo of him. We sat there for like two hours just talking about whatever. He was married. And he was, like, trying to get back over the border for whatever reason. And then he was going to bring back his wife. This whole thing. He ended up giving me, like, some crack software to, like, get Wi-Fi passwords. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? We're just talking about whatever. And he's like, yeah, here, man. Like, you're in the same situation as I am. Take this. You'll need it. You know? It was, like, it was honestly one of the coolest things I'd ever, ever said to anyone. You know what I mean? In the middle of winter. This, this, is, what this is, yeah, I always think about this. Like, that's just, for me, that's basic human nature. Like, I don't look at them as different. or that's Like, race. we just get along. Race. Yeah. So... Why have these people with like, like? Why are these people like just causing all this fucking diversity? Like, fear factor, man. Why did Sonia Kruger come out and say I'm scared for my children? We need to stop Muslim immigration. Like, what are you talking about? Because she's dumb. Yeah, but she's still on TV. <laughs> because she's the media's still, run by she's, white she's still, she's still on TV, man. It's just insane, man. Can like, you, <coughs> like, could you imagine that? Can you imagine if we made those statements? I forget it. We'd we'd be dead. Dude. We, we'd be we'd be in jail. But these people, like, it's still on TV. It's just getting hushed over, and no one gives a shit. They just keep mulching it over, man. You know what I mean? <sighs> I watched, man, on the way, when I got back from... No, 
this morning after I made breakfast, I, t- I was watching Channel 2, like I, you know, the news or whatever. Then I flicked it over to Channel 10 or 11. I was, I was seeing if it was too early for like Becker and Frazier and stuff to start. And that Studio 10 was still on with like Ida Buttrose and that other fucking blonde hawk. Like they're all wankers. <laughs> Dude, they were pra- you know what they were prattling on about? Actually, this is what I was going to say to you. They were prattling on. Do you remember how um, this was an episode when Nick was overseas? How they were, Bali was talking, Indonesia was talking about the ban, selling, banning the sale of alcohol. Yeah. And then all the Aussies were like, oh, you can't ban it. There's How nothing dare wrong. they take there's away nothing, our yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with unwinding with some alcohol. It's like, dude, you're in a Muslim country. Like, that's their right. You know what I mean? Do you know what they were prattling on about this time? Vanuatu, they want to ban the sale of uh, chocolate and sugar and stuff from like mini, like just mini bars and in excess like everywhere they want yeah. to ban it because of the state of like you know teeth and obesity or whatever yeah and they're probably going about there's nothing wrong with indulging in some chocolate when you're on holidays it's like so don't go there like do you know what i mean like you're gonna tell me uh australian citizens are gonna throw their voice in whether a nation like you know a couple thousand k's away is gonna do what they're gonna do with the sale? Like it was okay for us to make our chocolate bars smaller and then just charge the same amount for less, but it's unfair for people in Vanuatu to ban the sale of this sort of shit in their tourist traps or hotels because there's nothing wrong with Australians indulging in some chocolate mm. on holidays. That's what you want. Mm. Take, a cho- take a chocolate bar with you, you idiot. Yeah, and it was the same thing. Uh, or, and they started making jokes of it, like, "Oh, are they going to have contraband? Could you take Maltesers in?" One, it's like. They're making a joke for like like that someone's taking the, the piss. It's, they it's, can do if they want to ban do if they want to ban fucking coke then they, they can, can do ban what, coke they can do whatever they want. Like you know what I mean? Just like we're banning Muslims. Yeah, it's okay for us to limit the the portion sizes of chocolate, but it's not okay for someone else to outright ban it. Mm. How ridiculous is it? It's like... You've got to take Australians into consideration. Yeah. yeah. It's that kind of ignorance, man. I really... can't have my goddamn Chiquito. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to be able to buy a Chiquito when I'm overseas. This is an outrage. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's literally all of that, man. And just it's starting to piss me off because they're clamping down on all types of shit. Like with oh and it makes like no sense. Like everything's over police and all that. Man, actually, you know what, man? I forgot to say this to you. This happened like a month or something ago. I was talking to my mum one day and she said... um. Uh, she got booked like I, I don't know if you know it, man. my mom does like aged care and things like that like pensioners like need um like, yeah, yeah, disabilities yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then she, she was like a carer yeah. and then like yeah goes and helps him out yeah she would go cook him a meal keep him company take him to doctor's appointments whatever yeah dude she got booked in Oakley which I can totally see your mum doing that she's super nice <laughs> <laughs> super cool she got booked in Oakley dude she was parked outside the bank one of the banks the, the WOG banks Her, the client or whoever she was watching had like some sort of, uh, she was old, frail, like I don't know what's wrong with her. Bank of but she has like a walker thing, yeah? Yeah. And the bank is very far away from like the disabled spots and just the general parking. So she pulled up to the build, like cause this woman can't walk. You know what I mean? Like she's frail. <clears throat> she just come out of surgery or something yeah. as well. So my mum pulled up outside the bank, hit the hazards, got out, helped the woman out of the car with mm. like her walker and just put her like on the sidewalk and then got in her car and drove off, she got booked for illegally double parking. And she tried telling, like, the, the parking... Wouldn't even want to hear a bar. Yeah. About, yeah. So I'm helping a disabled person. Like, what do you want me to do? I go, the nearest spots are, like, you know, a good couple hundred metres away. This woman can't walk. And they didn't give a shit. They're like, nah. That's the kind of situation where he should just help. And there shouldn't even be yeah. any talk of booking mm. some lady for helping. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. The, what do they want? Like, my mum to park, like, 100 k's away, then carry the woman back to the bank? <laughs> And it's not like my mum is like 30 years old. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> my mum's heading like in the in middle age and she got booked. I said, what the fuck? I go, couldn't you park in? She goes, it was too far. And, I, and ultimately, my mum said, I've just told that client that I'm not going to be taking it to Oakley anymore because I can't. Good. If you can't walk 50 metres from the car spot, yeah. then I'm sorry, but I can't. I physically can't do it. Yeah. I'm going to keep getting booked every time I take you. Yeah, ridiculous. How that's, sad is that? So then what happens there? That's common now. What happens there, man? This woman can't get to the bank for whatever reason. Mm. How are her finances going to get sorted out? She can't speak English. Like, her English is very poor, and she's old. So you can, you can imagine her, like, on the phone, like, Welcome to NAB. Press 1 for... Eh? Yeah. <laughs> eh? Just smashing the button, the keypad. <laughs> so then what happens? <laughs> Your phone call is important to us. What the fuck is she saying? Even take it back a level, just to paying for parking. Just, like, even just that. Oh. Like, why? You paint, <laughs> a line, you paint a fucking square line, and now you charge me to go in there. Yeah. 
Fucking Why? Parking. Dude, parking isn't cheap. It's fucking expensive. Park at St Kilda, right, near Luna Park. It's literally like seven eighty for one hour or... A max of like twelve dollars a day. Yeah. yeah, it's like well, if you're gonna stay for how, how long would a dinner take? Two hours? A couple of hours. So you Two might hours. Pay the twelve bucks. You got to pay twelve bucks whether you're staying there or not. Like yeah. that's it. Even if you want to go there just for an hour and a half. It's like remember that time I got the speeding ticket in Springvale. Speeding ticket. Uh, speeding ticket. Oh, when you got pa- the, the Viet yeah, Roll. Like, yeah. Did you pay that? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, now that you now, still trying to now track that I bring it up, down. I realise I'm paying. They're trying to track you down. <laughs> but. Like, and listen to this. That was like an, one of the first episodes. Yeah, that was early. That was like five and, and you know what? Six. They're listening to this. We got him. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're just on the side of the road. Like, like, why the fuck are you charging people? Why do I have to give you money just to stop my car here? Just no, that. Because we don't pay enough for, like, road, road tax. But then on top of that, yeah, for road, like, you take fucking $3,000 out of my, like, four or 500 bucks out of my pay every week, and then, like... They make you pay to park. Oh, <laughs> they make you pay to park your car, man. Uh, the other day when I was paying, I just tri- I literally I had one of these you know moments, warp yeah. of realities, and I'm just like, this is fucked up. Like, what yeah, I'm man? paying to park my car on the side of the road. Yeah. It's not, not like not you're the- in a building where it's secure and they've got you know hand literally- The only difference is it has a little box there next to it. Yeah, that's but it. They put a box up. It's a day we charge you. <laughs> Which would have cost so much to put it up. How nuts is that, man? It's insane. It's like insane. The, the concept of it. Like, the, the con- theory... The concept of it is insane. The concept of paying for parking on the street. What do you... What do you what, why? Why am I doing this? Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, 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 people get booked for parking on their lawns now, depending where they are. Certain areas. Yeah, I've told my mum, look, she parks it on the lawn. I said, just careful, because... Yeah, they some, get... Some arsehole councils crack it, yeah. yeah. But it's your lawn. It's your well, lawn. Well, technically, it's the council lawn. Yeah, but you know what? You have to pay to maintain it. That's right. Yeah, you have that, to cut the grass. You, you have, to, you have to pay to maintain the lawn on your front property. <clears throat> Otherwise, the council will come. They'll, they'll, they'll come and say, mate, you better clean your lawn up. So a smart wog would concrete it and then park on it and be like, there's no lawn there. You're not allowed to concrete. But that's what I'm saying. You're not allowed to concrete grass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Someone would have done it though. Oh, no, <laughs> somewhere. So, yeah. Just concrete. ripped it up. Yeah, yeah ripped, ripped it up. Concrete. Yeah. Park cars. But car park. Think about it. You're Start not allowed charging. to park on the grass outside the front of your house. <laughs> Dude, you're not allowed to park on the yeah. grass outside the front of your house, but you have to pay to maintain it. Yeah. Why? Because it's not yours. It's just under your responsibility. Yeah. Come again? <laughs> you know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> How ridiculous does that sound? Yeah. yeah. But we just accept it. Like, yeah, sure. Like, we'll do that. And it's not slowing down. Like, there's more and more... There's more and more... Hidden little, fees and hidden charges little everywhere. Little loopholes and bullshit yeah. that make absolutely no sense. Why are we doing it? Yeah, because... To make because to make some big conglomerate fucking more rich, like, that's some, it. That's some mob needs extra 20 bucks. That's the all of it. Yeah. <laughs> 20 bucks. 20 bucks. <laughs> it's, it's fucked. It's bizarre. I, ca- I can't handle that shit, man. It's bizarre, dude. I, I actually get really, really angry. Uh. With the, especially when I heard about when my mum told me that thing, mum. I, like, lost my shit, yeah. man. Yeah. It's a joke. That's the mentality, man, of, like, these cops and, like, they just don't give a fuck, like... And they're, they're the kind of people they hire, like, just those... Cunts. No empathy, just like, nah, nah do it. I've, I've got the rules, fucking listen dude, to me. Dude, empathy's like, out the window. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's finished.